and go. The Be Kind Podcast, episode 35. Sorry about the lighting. Uh, you know, this, this podcast is going to be called uh, Praying for Peace, Preparing for War, uh, Dancing with the Devil, I Know. You know, there's a song that Jelly has a few albums back called Creature, and, and the basis of the song is that talks about how what most people run from are, are afraid of he's made peace with because it's the only peace that he knows and you know you know the things that are happening in my life are a long time coming and I fought tooth and nail and tried to manipulate try to change try to do everything humanly possible to not have the inevitable happen because if something's meant to be it's meant to be and if it's not meant to be no matter how hard you beg plead borrow still manipulate you know deny it's gonna just it, every the universe has a way of unfolding and you know i'm at a point in place right now where you know i had someone tell me you know, people think you're this great person online and, you know, but you're really not. And here's the truth. I'm going to pull an Eminem uh, eight by a moment. I'm not the best husband in the world. I'm a terrible father at times. Sometimes uh, I am lazy. Sometimes I get, well, not sometimes, I get angry real quick. Angry, like I truly related to the Hulk when Bruce Banner said, told, uh, 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 Iron Man's character, you know, how do you get, how do you release the Hulk? And he's like, it's easy. I'm always angry. And, you know, anger has always been my go-to defense. And I, I can be manipulative. I can be very, uh, you know, I was a liar, a thief and a, a drug dealer. Uh, I was an addict. I'm still an addict, but I'm in recovery. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll never think I can have just one drink. You know, I am not in denial. I see where, like I was talking to a coworker today, you know, I bought this Backbone uh, gaming system accessory as a, a little reward because I've worked a lot of overtime this pay period. And he's like, yeah, you know, sometimes I buy a bottle of scotch or whiskey and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't work for me, man. I've had, you know, I, I have one drink and, you know, while you want to go home and relax, I'm like, well, I need to pick up an eight ball and, and, and hang out with some strippers and you know, do some stupid stuff and my life goes off the rail real quick. Like there's no denial for me that I can have just one. Um, I am a firm believer that, you know, one is too many and a thousand is never enough. You know, the closest I've come to drinking in the 18 years was the night of October 1st or the morning of while I was waiting for, uh, I had ordered a drink at a slot machine. I had just dropped one of the girls off who was in my room that I brought back from the concert. Their husband had just picked them up and I paid $20 in a slot machine, which is something I do for my mom. And I ordered a Jack and Coke, double the Jack, light the Coke, gave the girl a $20 tip. And I was sitting there playing. My sponsor called me at the time, check in. I said, I'm good. Didn't want to tell him I was ready to order a drink or I had ordered a drink. And Usually I can make $20 last for a while, like, you know, play for, you know, half hour to an hour. Literally $20 is gone in like three spins because I max bet, max bet, max bet. And I was like, all right, I'll go back to my room. Don't know what she probably gave the drink to somebody else. But like, that's the closest I've ever been to drinking in 18 years. Um, you know, I, I deal with alcoholics on a daily basis. I deal with raging alcoholics. I deal with, you know, the everyday addict user. I deal with the recreational user. It does not appease me to lose control of my senses to the point where I am not in control of my decisions because that is one of my biggest uh, pet peeves. It was one of my biggest fears. Like, you know, it's something that I equate with what happened that night was I was not in control of my situation as I was dodging bullets hitting the ground, trying to get to my car, trying to call my kids. Like I, I get that false sense of control. And, uh, you know, I had this person tell me, oh, people think you're this great person and you know, you're not. And, you know, I have, I have friends of mine that I really care about 
who are taking this time that I'm stepping back very personal. And it's really not about anybody but me. Like, I need to figure out what I want to do with my life. Like, I, I hope Love Wins goes on forever, but who knows? Like, I don't know what's going on. I, you know, I, I, I'm at a, a career that most people are dying to get into and I'm grateful for my shift. I'm grateful for the job. I'm grateful for the life that it provides for my family, but it's not my passion. Like, but I don't even know what my passion is. Like, I don't know, you know, I'm praying for peace, but preparing for war. Like I'm paying off all my credit card debt. I'm paying, I'm trying to, I'm not trying. I am going to pay off my mortgage. I am going to pay off this car note. I am going to live the life beyond my dreams, but how I'm going to do it. I have no clue. And right now my personal life is, falling apart because I need to make some hard decisions and it really doesn't matter what the situation is if you don't know what the situation is and you don't have my phone number to call me and ask me on a personal basis and even if you do and I say you know what it's something I need to take care of myself then I, I ask that you respect it I do these social media posts and this vlog and this this podcast to let you know that you're not alone if you're struggling with something similar and it's nothing personal if I don't want to let you into that circle because I need to figure it out. And something I've told people in my life, by the time I'm talking about it on a social media platform, I'm trying to get through to the other side. But there's days like I don't want to talk to freaking nobody. And, you know, it's hard because you have commitments, you know. We're fundraising. We're getting ready to kick off the uh, the uh, eighth annual holiday drive or ninth. I don't know because like we had the first annual and it had not even big year one. Like we were still like I, I had someone correct me on uh, when I posted the list and I took it personally. Like, well, you know, that's where I'm at. And the truth of the matter is they were they were correct. I had to change the post because we're going into year seven. But I said eight years, you know, and I feel like, you know, and. Like, I take stuff real personal. Like, and I take stuff more personal than it really needs to be. Because the truth of the matter is, I'm always praying for peace, but I'm so used to living in war and chaos. And like, right now, my life is on the verge of, I feel like, a, a nuclear explosion. And I don't want that because, like, I fought really hard to get to this point in my life where I'm financially stable. I, I feel like I'm more emotionally balanced than I've ever been in my whole life. I I have physical goals that I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to build long-term lasting relationships with people that I love and care and admire that we could help each other grow to be the best version of ourselves. And at the same time, that demon that's in the back of my mind is trying to find a way in through the slightest crack. Like, you don't deserve that. It's all going to fail anyway, so you might as well go out in a blaze of glory. And I'm trying to navigate a life where nothing seems stable. You know, it's one of those times where I really wish my grandpa was here, my mom, my pops, even, and not even my nanny. Nanny would be a great source. And I, I go back to those memories that I have, conversations that I didn't know I would need in the future that I kind of filed away in. I just really miss them, man. Like, I have a lot of people in my life that love me and care about me and are on Team Dennis and trying to help me change the world. And sometimes I feel like I'm the loneliest person in the world. And I'm praying for peace, but I'm constantly living in personal war. You know, I'm trying to raise my kids to be the best version of themselves. Trying not to pass on generational curses. You know, I already know there's a couple I've passed on and I'm trying to correct it before my time is going. Sorry, water. I'm like dehydrated. I'm working like back-to-back -back doubles. You know, I had someone complain to someone in my life about the clothing I was wearing because it, it was advertising. Uh, I, and they, they weren't a sponsor or anything. It's just, honestly, I was wearing a certain shirt, a certain type of shirt because I didn't care if it got dirty. I worked at a poop plant, you know, I deal with chemicals and raw sewage. So I really didn't care, but apparently it bugged 
this person enough to reach out to someone at that organization and said, well, I don't know if you should, you should tell him not to wear that shirt because uh, he's representing you and yada, yada, yada. Like if you are watching my channel to the point you're looking at what type of clothing I'm wearing and trying to report it to those people, like I pray for you. And there was a time, a hundred percent, I would try to find out who you are and wreck your life for everything it's worth. And I'll tell you this, that person is a solid person because I told them, tell me who it is so I can remove them from my friends list and block them from social media. And they wouldn't do it. So I don't know what kind of relationship you have with them, but God bless you. I hope that I post something that really changes your life and you know, you truly get whatever you need because if you're watching my channel just so you can go report to other people, I'm sorry that your life is that pitiful that you have to watch my channel to try to get me in trouble for speaking my truth. Like when I was coming into work, I was like, okay, I need to get this off my chest because it's been just like, urgh. like I've been eating at me because I'm ready to rage and I'm ready to explode on anything. And I don't want to be that, man. Like, I just want to live a life where I get up, I do some content, I spend time with my kids, I go to go to the work job, jobby job, I, I build my foundation, and I change the world. I run my, like, I haven't been able to run the last couple of days just because, you know, this weekend has been a complete, a complete poop show. Like, I want to use other words, but I want to be able to use this. Like, I I want, when I post these, these uh, vlogs slash podcasts, I want to make it so anybody, all ages, can listen. Because you never know what a child's going through. Like, my nine-year-old son is my world. You know, my little man, I had the best day at Disneyland with him the other day. All day, I kept hearing, I love you, Dad. You're the best dad in the world. I love you giving me kisses and hugs. And I love you. I love you. Like... To him, I'm still a superhero. To my other kids, I'm just dad. You know, I let my daughter down because, you know, she was my firstborn biologically and I had no freaking idea what I was doing. My two older kids, you know, my older son and I have a really good relationship, but it took years to build that. And I don't talk to my oldest daughter. You know, things happened and that's the truth. And, uh, you know, I've made my peace. I've, I've cleaned my side of the street and I, I wish them the best. But I'm not gonna allow anybody in my life. I don't care if you're family. I don't care if you're, you're my best friend. I am not gonna allow anybody to rob my joy. I'm praying for peace, but I'm preparing for war. I'm tired of feeling like I have to be everything for everybody and lose myself in the process because all I'm trying to do, like 100%, like I know what kind of person I was before October 1st, 2017. And even though I was in recovery uh, and even though I was, you know, trying to excel in a career, I was not the best person in the world. And I made a promise to my higher power. If I made it home that night, I would get a family photo, which I did. I've gotten several since then. I would try to be the best version I can be of me. And every day I try to do that to the best of my ability. And some days it's a glorious success. And some days I'm going down like the Heisenberg. And lately I feel like everything I try to do to get me to that next level falls just this short. And I want to rage and I want to give up. And like, you know, I feel like, the, you know, this funny is this training for a marathon, right? I wanted to do the Disney marathon in January. Well, they had issues with the website. It crashed, so they postponed the registration. Well, the registration opened earlier than they, they had announced that it would. So I couldn't even register. So I'm going to have to pirate run. Hopefully I can get in. Then, you know, there was a... a, a 5k 10k a day that i didn't even know about that i would have gone to not that i could have because i was working a double but you know it's just like 
and then I go to the, when I am running and I'm training, like, I, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Like, and, but there's a point when I feel like I feel free in the run. Like when I just get in that groove and this all started because I was trying to support Jally and his 5k in May. And I understand the struggle of just even walking around the block, let alone a mile, three miles. And now I'm, uh, I'm up to five miles at least once a week and I'm running two and a half, three miles every other day. Like there's progress and, perf and, and, and proof that I'm getting better than I was when I started almost a year ago but the truth of the matter is no matter what kind of chaos that is going on in my life it doesn't touch the surface on how much I beat myself up because deep down inside I feel like I don't deserve the good life I don't deserve the great relationships I don't deserve that career that sets me apart from everybody else I don't deserve to have a nonprofit or be a part of a nonprofit that is going to change the world because of who I was. Praying for peace, but preparing for war. Because you know what? Prior to getting clean and stop using drugs, like I was talking to somebody who's who's going through their own journey right now, where I had to take a, a step back because I was angry because things weren't happening and they it, there's a struggle. And you know, I called my sponsor, said, Sponsor, I feel like a failure. This is what's going on. And he's like, man, he's all, it's not, and it says it in our, in the literature. And I'm not some, you know, basic text, Bible thumping kind of guy. But the truth of the matter is, it's not a surprise when an addict relapses and uses. It's a miracle when they don't. And I had to go back to the last time I got high in my parents' house. You know, I, I called them up, said I need a place to shower and, and get some sleep. And I promised I want to get loaded. And, you know, they went to sleep and I had some uh, some get up and go and I didn't have any utensils. So I, I took a light bulb off of their uh, their lamp and I cracked it and, and I didn't realize I had to clean out the white stuff. So when things weren't going the way I wanted to, I cracked it like three light bulbs later. I'm cleaning their house at midnight and, you know tattooing myself with a homemade machine and then wondering why my pops threw me out the next day telling my mom he's not allowed at the house anymore we have to think about the girls and I was mad like how dare you throw me out I'm the you know I'm your son and yada 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 but I wasn't holding myself accountable for my addiction I was in denial because it was your fault I was getting high it was your fault that I kept getting in trouble it was your fault you, 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 and I was, and, and I truly understand now when I'm pointing one finger at you, that's why there's three pointing back at me. Because in my whole life and all the chaos and preparing for war that I have gone through, 99% of the war is self-induced. And I keep praying for peace, but I'm praying for peace with the same thing that causes me to go to war. I need to change that behavior and it's so hard because I keep trying to change that behavior and I was reaching out to a friend of mine uh, was they reached out to me and they're like hey what's going on and I'm like it's personal and they're like well what you know I thought we were, were closer than that and it's like it's nothing it's not you it's me like I need to address the emotions and the actions that are causing me to repeat this cycle of war when all I really want is peace I want I don't, and it doesn't even matter about financial success. And I just want peace. I want to be able to lay my head on my pillow and not worry about the next freaking train that's going to sideswipe. Like I was talking to my son and like, you know, financially I am in a place other, not even when I was dealing drugs at the level I was dealing. Financially, I am in a place where I can handle everything and even have a little a little bit of money to go on vacation a little bit of money to save you know i can run the air conditioner all summer long and not worry about the bill because i'm paying the bill like i'm good and my life is more chaotic than when i was living on uh, welfare and a halfway house and emotionally inside i feel like i'm breaking again like, I just, I feel like I can't catch my breath. 
because I'm always preparing for war and praying for peace, but I don't believe peace is possible for someone like me. Like I feel like, and this is goes against everything I've been studying the last two years about, you know, manifesting the life of your dreams and, and putting it out in the universe because all I'm manifesting is this chaos because I feel like I have to pay penance for the, you know, <sighs> I actively actively used from the age of 12 to 29. October 4th, uh, 2005 was the last time I got high and drunk. I haven't had I haven't used a mind altering substance or booze since that night. Call me California clean because I don't go to meetings. I don't actively work a program. I have a sponsor. I got people in the program that I stay in contact with. But, you know, my program will get you loaded. But prior to that, prior to that first day of recovery, I wasn't someone I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't wish the life or the choices I made up until that point on anybody. And then I got clean. I took the drugs away. I took the booze away. I took the be- I tried to take the behavior away, but then I was left with me and the anger and the fester and everything that I was trying to pay penance for just kept praying for peace, pray for war, 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 feeding that demon. And then Route 91 happened and I realized what a horrible human being I was because I was manipulating and trying to, I would take from you to build from me. Like, I forgot where I saw it, but it's something about, you know, if I have to put some, if I have to dim your light to make mine shine, then I'm the problem. And that's who I was before. And then I built this, this family around me to help me build this foundation and be a part of something. And then I felt like I got stabbed in the back by one of my closest allies. And I held on to that and I, oh, it just, oh, and it took years and a lot of work to let that go. And now I, I feel like I'm in free fall because I don't know what the next move is. And I'm afraid if I just sit still long enough, the next train's going to sideswipe me. So I got to prepare for war, but pray for peace. And the hardest part about that is I don't know who to trust. I'm talking from family, from friends, because I don't know if I can even trust myself to make a decision that's not emotionally charged. Like I have to sit still and that's the hardest thing for me because I feel like I don't have control. And I don't want to let that put me in a box or make a decision that I'm going to regret because I didn't think it all the way through because I'm preparing for war, but praying for peace. And I the chaos of the war is self-induced 99% of the time. You never know where you're going to end up by one bad decision. But you prepare for war and pray for peace. It's a very delicate balance. And right now I feel like I'm losing it. I feel like I'm losing people I care about because I'm not able to give them all of me. I'm, I'm protecting myself from people I care about because I can't allow their decision and their chaotic life to affect mine. I'm trying to be the best person I can be for my children. I'm trying to be the best person I can be for myself. I'm trying to show up for people in my life even when I feel like I can't show up for myself because I'm praying for peace when I'm at war with myself. I needed to get that off my chest because if I put it in the universe, then the universe is going to help me get through to the other side. I believe in a higher power that has chosen me for this calling to change the world through random acts of kindness. And it's not easy, man. Sometimes I feel like I'm letting that purpose down because all I want to do is just tell the world, "Mm, put it where the sun don't shine because you know what? I deserve better. And the truth of the matter is, if I woke up today with 1,440 minutes to change the world, then I'm already truly blessed. Every opportunity, every breath is a living and, and breathing miracle. And I have to embrace that because it's the truth. 
I am a living, breathing miracle. The things that I have gone through would kill most people, literally. And I'm still here for a reason. I'm not, I've been broken. I've been beaten. I've been discarded. I've been tormented. All of this self-induced because of the decisions I made based on fear and anxiety. And for once in my life, I'm addressing these things as they come. And it's not easy because I feel like I'm letting everybody down because I'm trying to make the right decision for the right reasons in the right time. <sighs> if you watch this uh, episode, I hope you got something out of it. I'm going to listen to it probably in a couple days after it drops. Because like I told my daughter, yeah, I listen to everything I post because sometimes the person I'm talking to that needs to hear the message the most is me. So in a world where you can be anything, be kind. It's priceless, it's free, and I promise a random act of kindness will change the world.